So welcome back. This is like part two with Nicolay and friends. Uh, <laughs> inquisitive, what number? What, what did we just do? I think seven. So inquisitive mind of Lewis T. Number eight. I'm gonna we'll go back around the room. Have everybody introduce themselves. Uh, start across. Let's, let's start with you this time. Me. Uh, um, I go by DJ Battle. Uh, that's that's what I go by. That's my name. Right. Actually, let's do this a little bit different. So, because this is this is the producers' conversation. So, uh, okay. everybody, uh, say something production like what? What's your your introduce yourself and your weapon of choice? On oh, my weapon of choice, well, um, right now I'm using um, the um, what do you call Ableton uh, Push Two? Hell yeah. yeah, yeah, I use that too. Oh, word. Yeah. Man, like... Well, I, need... I use it live. I don't use it okay. to create, but, yeah, I, yeah. but I love... Yeah, man. I started with the... The, um... the APC? Did no. Did you have that? The APC no, I didn't. 42? Okay. I didn't. That's I didn't. how yeah. I started. Well, okay. Man, enjoy it. Oh, well, well, like, like, like hey, I'm talking hey, about going this, back. This, this, oh, yeah. It's really... It's really... No. <laughs> no, <it was> really <laughs> all right. So, you who also like the Apleton, who yeah, are you, man. sir? Yeah. I'm Nicolay. Also, I like the push, too. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I'm not endorsed. By Hilton. yeah. <laughs> now, but I, I, um, I think my weapon of choice, I, shit, I guess it's Pro Tools. Okay. Yeah, but uh-huh. it's kind of, you know, it's kind of lame. It's not really. I don't really have a cool weapon of choice. Pro, I mean, I think Pro Tools is a. It's alright, you know. Yeah. yeah. And uh, to my to my left, my name is Khan Sai from a crew called Minds One, and I'm wildly outdated, and I still use a, a Kai MPC 2000 XL. With the floppy disk. With the floppy disk? With the floppy First of all, yeah, well, the, what's, the, the, what's the, the zip disk? Disks, you know? So the yeah. zip disk was like the floppy disk. Yeah, the like, Omega uncle. joints? Or yeah, what? Yeah. yeah, man. I'm still out here. Wow. Um, it fit says, like 100 MBs or something. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's real I got shit. like 15 <laughs> beats yeah. on each. Do you um, like still record your music on ADAS? <laughs> <laughs> I have like one or two uh, minds, or like I guess I was in a crew called Native Sons and, and we recorded a couple songs on ADAT. I still got an ADAT. Oh. With some beats on it, uh, um, it looks like a VCR tape. Yeah, and then the SP five hundred five, I still still use that. Um, and then I teach a beat making class, and we use Reason, but that would I would not call that my weapon of choice by any means. Okay, is Re- um, um, Reason is that like a program similar to like Pro Tools? Nah, well, Pro Tools is more of an interface for recording, but you can you can obviously construct uh, beats on there. Reason. Ugh. Reason I guess you'd put more <laughs> so, in like the world of Ableton, yeah, yeah. Loops, right, and, like, and FL, yeah, yeah, it's and they all have different approaches as far as they do their like their operating systems. Reason I feel like was kind of created more for like the electronic producer, mm-hmm. and then hip hop dudes like are trying to use it. I just the program that I teach uh, at they were already using Reason, so I had to sort of teach myself it. I was about the same. Every time I hear Reason, I think of. <laughs> Songs. Don't sing. We don't need that. Was that Teddy Pendergrass to sing that song? No. What song? The reason. The reason why we're here. The oh, reasons. That's not Teddy Pendergrass. Just keep it moving. Nah, nah, <laughs> nah. <laughs> just I can't. Well, well, Got to do a side note. Yeah, um, <laughs> the they were just talking about it on another podcast. Uh, one of the groups. Uh, and the main guy, Teddy Pendergrass, was the main guy of the group. Oh, and, uh, I saw this too. Yeah. Uh, oh, Harold Melvin in the blue. Yeah, yeah, hell, yeah, yeah. I just, I, well, I, Harold, he doesn't do anything in the group. I mean, he I, I, I never knew group, that. Yeah, he's yeah. not the man. Well, I didn't yeah. know. I had no idea that was singer, Teddy yeah. Pendergrass. Yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah, so I just, I just kind of, I'm sorry, my mind went there. It's mind blowing. <laughs> um, but yeah, Fruity Loops, Reason. Uh, <laughs> And uh, so battle. When did you transition from? Because uh, you the you used to use the ARS X. The, yeah, the the um um was the ASRX. Oh, okay. the Sonic. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. That was the first thing that I got. Now this is going back to two thousand. 
Yeah, you like and uh, Suspense were the only people I knew that had right, that. Yeah. Like everybody was kind of NPC. Yeah, and y'all in that. I used to rock one of those. Oh yeah, is that the joint? The the big black it's box red. with the kind of. Oh well, yeah, yeah, like yeah. like like the, the first one was form? black. Yeah, yeah, yep. yeah. And you had the red one, which was the I think came out after. That's that. right. Yeah, yep. yeah. Yeah, I had I rocked that, and it was like I had the Omega drive with it because that's yeah. how you do it, and. Uh, the onboard sequencing wasn't really easy. At no, all. it wasn't. It was kind of a. It was very clumsy, and and, yeah. and like, uh, like um, I didn't do a whole lot with it. I mean, like I was making beats. It, it was more for fun. I mean, still to this day, it's kind of still more for fun for me. But like, uh, um, um, it really didn't change until it was probably five or six years later. I got on. I got on like. Um, um, Fruity Loops, you know, FL Studio. So like that. That's when. That's when it was like, oh, okay, like this is a lot more easier. Like I'm able to chop my samples and like I can see it. Like it made a lot more sense to yeah, me. Yeah, visually, you know I mean? it's, yeah, because yeah. the ASR, it didn't really. You could you could chop it, but you kind of yeah. had to. It was real dicey. Yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, so like that's when it really changed for me, and that's when I started making beats. You know, so. You still with yeah. us? I'm still with you. It's yeah. a geek gave you some real. <laughs> 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 uh, and so, Nicola, I know you you play a lot. So, what, uh, so I guess do you like uh, what kind of keyboard do you use? And then uh, do you do, the, do you take that into to um, into uh, I was about to say reason, but in, into Pro the Pro Tools. Yeah, you know. yeah. I I mean it. Um, at this point, it's it's a bunch, like I started collecting vintage synthesizers a while back, and that's a hobby that. I cannot recommend to anybody because <laughs> it is like they, I mean, it's really, I mean, it's on paper. It's really great, but they, they start messing up. Like they're vintage. They're old. Yeah. And then nobody knows how to fix them. That's kind of where I'm at right now. Mm. So I'm kind of actually moving away from all that. I'm really like into soft sins now because they've over the last 10 years have taken an incredible, uh, an incredible turn towards like just, just hi-fi grade incredible emulations of I, I don't think uh, long story short at this point nobody hears the difference okay i can have a, a eight thousand dollar Roland jupiter in my room or the 200 hundred dollar plug-in and mm -hmm. at this point like nobody really can tell them apart you know so right. i'm and i'm excited about that because i've always been you know i've got like 20 keyboards whatever and it just I really wanted to streamline it a little bit more. So I'm I'm really into kind of like sort of the all in the box shit at this point. So yeah. did you have different keyboards cuz each keyboard kind of gave you a different Yeah. You know, different They're all different. kind of different flavors like especially on the synthesizer, you have Moog, like mm -hmm. I'm into Moog, like most people have heard about that. That's kind of the real sort of round nice sort of basses and stuff like that. Every every uh Every brand has a flavor. Roland is a little bit more for the pads, and you know what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. So they all got their their place. So you kind of want one of each, uh, ideally. You know, you want a little bit of that flavor. But then again, it becomes just becomes a lot to keep track of. So I'm I'm really into like a couple of um, there's there's some incredible plugins that are being made right now that are just ridiculous in terms of quality. Right. And Joe, like so, and I don't know if this was later or not, but I know just on Instagram I see you playing a lot. So are you just does that have anything to do with your production, or are you just kind of playing for you? No, nah, I mean, I've, I've always, you know, enjoyed the piano. My mom is a pretty accomplished piano player, and she was a principal of an art school in D.C., um, but I was too hyperactive to, like, get me to sit down and play piano with her. But later in life, yeah, you know, I, I wanted to take on some new kind of musical pursuits, and that was one where, like, you know, I got sausage fingers, so I really, like, guitar is just never going to be my thing. But keys, I was always interested and, and you know, I've always kind of played around with them. So I, you know, picked me up a halfway decent um, digital keyboard and uh, with the weighted keys and, and kind of doing a little self talk thing. Okay. So, like, production wise, I think, like, on um, part one, you're saying that you don't sample. So, is it you don't sample anymore or you've never been a sample oh, I've, producer? Oh, I've assembled anything that I could get my hands on. Mm -hmm. um, but it, it, well, I mean, it's twofold for me. I I became frustrated with the limitations of that in terms of musically. I I really was interested in kind of really writing the music that would get sampled ultimately, you know. But I wanted mm -hmm. to do a song with 
a bridge and a chorus and just, you know, kind of musically more. So I, at the end of the day, that really didn't uh, help. But it was also just the, the legal aspect of knowing that unless you you clear everything perfectly, which a lot of independent guys are never going to be able to afford, um, you honestly are not the owner. You're honest. You're not the sole creator of, of your art, you know. And so for me, it, it became this thing of like, and I, I don't, I'm not a purist, you know. I, I, I think sampling is, let me, let me put it this way. There's nothing like a great sample, right? There's nothing like, um, I think that's, somebody's getting a buzz. Coffee. But uh, there's, coffee's there, ready. Coffee's ready. I, I mean, <laughs> sounds good. <laughs> Take me with a little bit of, um, but um, no, but it 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 really is. Um, now I lost my train of thought. What were we talking about? You were saying that you're not a purist, right? So like samples, like I think honestly, there's nothing like a sample that is well chosen. There's really not a lot that you can do to even sort of emulate it. Like a lot of guys play replay certain stuff, and it never really kind of you know. I think a sample is a sample, and and um, I just moved away from it for more kind of practical reasons. But there's you know, there's guys that still sample, you know, there's like, I think Ninth still pretty much does yeah. the same shit he does. Absolutely. Um, yeah. To this day, you know, and, um, but it, it, it's a headache, dude. It's a headache, you know, to, to, to clear all that stuff. But are you more sample? Yeah, like I'm more sample. Like, um, I can't really play much. Um, I kind of um, have been, you know, like self-teaching. But like um, at the same time, I'm not like uh, I'm not playing anything. Like I, like I can I can put together bass lines and, but I mean like that that um, what you were saying about uh, being limited in what you can do with the sample, um, like for me, I've always wanted to do both. Mm -hmm. I wanted to be able to sample and then also, you know, add stuff that like I can play with the sample. So right. like there's points like in the track where I can take the sample all the way out. And yeah, it's yeah. all what I played and then bring the sample back in. So like Which is kind of what the yeah. basis of my sound was in the beginning. Right. It was yeah. very much like there's a sample but there's also all this oh shit. Oh print all this print. print. <laughs> <laughs> um, but there's all there you know it it yeah that 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 makes it easier for, once you lay your own bass line right you know it is easier to take the sample out and and um i used to really like putting layers over layers over layers right, so yeah. that you don't even really recognize the sample you know like a lot of the samples that like i've never been i've been called out once mm. which was ironically a harold melvoin and a blue note sample <laughs> and i got called out on it and then they found out it was the whisk leaf track Oh. I don't know if y'all know that. Yeah. Um, and so they called me up because it was Whisk Leaf was on it. So some basically some sleeping dogs woke up. Yeah. And once they realized like it was on my album that sold like, you know, however many, they were like, oh, don't worry about it. <laughs> like right. they really literally didn't want to sue me. Cause it, <laughs> it wouldn't, you know. Yeah. But like I know Ninth got caught a couple of times. I'm sure. You know, and, sure. but I only got the one. You know, yeah. I only got the one. And I, I think most of mine... Like, there were a few that were really blatant, like the Silvers. I've always, I'm still expecting a call from the Silvers for that All That You Are joint. Oh, wow. You know, because that's... Don't give them that. I, yeah, like, I mean, they, I mean, come on, everybody knows that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they could go on, like, whosample.com or what is yeah. it, all that stuff. They're right, all yeah, out yeah. there. They're All my shit is out and open. Like, they all blew my spot up, so. <laughs> but, I mean, it's, again, it, right now, it's just like, they're not going to go after me you know they're gonna go after bigger fish. You know what I'm saying. Right. So I've never, I've never gotten in trouble like so you're under that, that that radar. Yeah. Yeah. What about you, Khan? Have I ever got caught up sampling? No, <laughs> no, I'm not. That, I'm not that important. <laughs> no, I'm, you are. You are sample like. Yeah, you know, I'm definitely like, a sample based like dude. A, would you consider yourself the quote unquote boom bap producer? I guess. Yeah, that feels like a little limiting because yeah, I like a lot of jazz based stuff too. Um, so I mean, I, I like the primos, but again, you know me, I like the Dillas and the large pros and the Pete Rock. So I try and like have that range, and I love jazz music in and of itself. So like, kind of like a little more mellow jazz based stuff to a little more aggressive boom bap, and obviously it's um, you know sampling is is sort of the crux of everything for me. But again, bass lines are a big piece, and then it comes down to you know like when I was, was working more with like with Kev, yeah. um, you know to then hear all right you have your main sample layer, and then maybe you sampled like a guitar stab or or um, you know just just a chord, but then stretching it out 
over the 16 pads, you then can do something melodically just with that. Right. So I don't need to like implement a synth. I could just take one synth stab and literally like I can play chords um, if I set it to poly, you know, on the MPC and almost as if I were to be playing piano. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. So there's just cool music uh, sort of musical approaches even if you're still sampling, you know. And then I'm such like a sample head that, A, I like trying to, you know, you know you've made it if you got on whosample.com. But it's like, yeah, yeah. you know, like I like uh, trying to pick stuff out, but even more so, I just like noticing the way people sequence their samples. Yeah. Um, and that's like a big, that's always, you know, when I first started to think about beat making, it was like, I knew maybe knew the original song, but I was like, no, nah, yeah. you really that's, shocked. And that's premiere for me. Yeah. Like, yeah. premiere, Absolutely. like, when you listen to You Know My Steez, the original, yeah. you're just like, I don't even know. I don't even hear, like, it's incredible. Like, yeah. he, like, Primo, I think it really is, like, he took that to another level where he cuts it up so that you really yeah. don't know. Yeah. You know, I yeah. mean, who knows what come clean, what the sample is to that shit. Right, yeah. yeah. Like, I don't know. Just, yeah, yeah. Some, some people, like... Uh, I'm I sure that maybe they know on the website, but I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was just talking to Battle um, a couple of bunches ago. Like, some of these people, I, I recently learned about, uh, what is it called, Blue Eyed? Was it? Blue Eyed Soul. Blue Eyed Soul. We had a whole conversation. And Bobby Caldwell. Oh. Bobby Caldwell. Yeah, like, hey, yeah. I, like they, just took, they, just, they just pretty... Well, yeah, didn't that either, but they just pretty much took the song and... And just laid it. It's just like I feel like I yeah. know the. It's just without the drum drum beats. A lot of his right. music, like uh, so many songs. Oh I was yeah. Just like, yeah. I'm a, but it made me a fan yeah, of him. Yeah, well, that was definitely the puffy effect. Yeah. I yeah, guess. Yeah, sure. Yeah. He started really like it was just like no, we're gonna just take the whole shit. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Hammer was doing it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Hammer. Hammer was doing yeah. It. That yeah. was a big part of the conversation. Like, like uh, that's yeah, why Hammer was definitely doing it. Um, um, that's why third base, you know, answered with the uh, "Pop Goes the Weasel," right, and right. they completely jacked the the fucking uh, the Peter Gabriel. Peter, yeah, 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 yeah. So it was yeah. kind of like the they, answer yeah, to yeah, Hammer. They really you know? did it, but I think yeah. I think Puffy did it in that era. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He, really, he took it to another. That, level. that was a, that was a defining yeah. sound. And for then it was just like, so now we're rapping over Sting. You know, right, yeah. right, right, right. Fucking terrible. Which, like, which is blasphemous yeah. for him. Right. Like yeah. he got a Bill Withers record and just like just ran <laughs> with it. Yeah. So this yeah. leads it to what the main topic of the day. Um, what's the difference between, or if is there a difference, and if so, what is the difference between a beat maker and a producer? It's mm. mm. a good question. Yeah. Huh. I think I think you got to think about it like a beat maker can be a producer. Producer is rarely a beat maker, you know. Like like, but For I instance. think you know like. So what would you so what would you consider like your yourself? Brian Wilson of the Beach Boys was a producer, but it's not you know. But they call like the thing about it is, the guy making the beat doesn't necessarily need to produce the recording, quote unquote. Yeah. You mm-hmm. know they call they they kind of are used as uh, synonyms, but they're really not. No. Especially yeah. in like a major level, um, the guy making the beat rarely is the guy that is the producer, quote unquote. Um, yeah. You know, so the difference really is like a beat maker, same as a guitarist, you know, or, or a drummer or whatever, is just kind of, you know, you, you contribute to the music. A producer is somebody that really kind of decides like, how is this going to sound? You know, like... How is the record going to sound? What kind of performance are you giving me? Well, a, a good producer is is a, is involved with the vocal recordings and and you know and everything. But I think a producer is a is a ve- producer does more than a beat maker does. Kind of you know, right. the, the, the the just the the, the portfolio. Yeah. You know, it used to be like the producer used to book the damn. Session musicians and everything. Yeah, like so back yeah. think of like a Quincy Jones. I mean, yeah, just like, think of, yeah it's like direct the damn strings, like yeah. everything. Like, yeah, you know, yeah. see, I don't they're, see a beat maker doing that. Like, you know. that's, I mean, well, there, there, but a lot of, in hip hop, in uh, in hip hop, a lot of times the beat makers are get labeled as the producers. Right. I feel like, and then some, but and then you got some producers that are the producers and the beat maker. Right. So that's why it gets. I guess confusing. there's very few there's very few but like uh the ones like I mean obviously like you got the big big names like the Pharrells and the Dr. Dre's people like that who are who are like producers right uh and like and they're beat makers yeah yeah yeah, yeah. they start they they yeah. make the beats but they go beyond yeah 
Yeah. yeah. And I think I think that's what it is. It's like a lot of people think like making a beat, making a beat is only is not necessarily making a record, right? I mean that's making right, yeah. a beat yeah. is is the foundation, but like a producer will also deal with uh, what you know arrangement. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and, I feel like the producer know. has the whole vision of the com- yeah, complete ideally. song. Right. Yeah. You know. The difference between the two is like is embedded in the name. Like yeah. One makes a beat and yeah. will give you the beat. The other one produces a song, you know, yeah. a record. But, a, a, but yeah, like I said, we know that and saying it. But yeah, usually, yeah. a lot of people that you might call a beat maker, you were still in hip hop. At least in, I'm just speaking from yeah. a hip hop yeah, perspective. Sure. They would still be called a quote unquote. Producer. Yeah, yeah. Those, yeah, like they can be synonymous amongst the lay people. It's mm-hmm. like, well. Like large professor, like someone just bought uh, a beat from large professor. And like, well, he he uh, he produced the record. You know, like yeah, we right, got beat, yeah. the beat miners on the new minds wanted album, but they didn't produce that song. Right, yeah, like right. they made we the just beat. got. We just were fortunate to get the beat from them. And yeah. then you think of like Premier. Premier is a beat maker. But I remember seeing an interview with him, and he's like, rarely just makes a bunch of beats. And yeah, games. I think he, he, produce, he always he produces makes beats. The, yeah, he, like he wants he to be involved in the song. He collaborates yeah. with the artists. Yeah. yeah, he'll make the beat on the spot with them. They'll work together. Yeah. You know, like have input on lyrics and and, yeah. and content and themes of the song, and then eventually the you know is involved with the uh, recording, if not doing the recording himself. Yeah. Um, again, he's kind of adamant about like, yeah, he's not making a bunch of beats and just giving or not giving them or selling them or whatever. He's right. Like, here's yeah. the beat you do, or here's a track that you do what you. Yeah. Yeah. with it um but yeah that was like when i think when you were telling me about this question i was like, like i remember that premiere interview i was like i guess i just imagined you know as a teenager like that's just what you did when you made beats like you were there yeah. you guys did it collaboratively like yeah. producing is a much co- more collaborative thing opposed yeah. to beat making it's like shit i got i got 50 of these like you pick one here's a here's a zip drive of 50 yeah. beats tell me which and one like you man want. man i never liked that no. Like, I was never comfortable with yeah. that, you know? I can't stand when people be like, yeah. yo, just send me a zip file of like 50 yeah. beats. I'm like, what? Yeah, oh, the man. internet yeah. killed hip hop, especially New York. I feel like New That's York. That's the name hip-hop, of this episode. Big statement. That's the <laughs> like, name of the episode. Yeah. <laughs> the internet killed hip hop. Right? <laughs> no, I'm just saying, like, uh, it's true though. Yeah. Well, I back mean, in the day, like, in the night, well, I feel like we're most, we're 90s kids, kind of far as like hip hop. Uh, maybe, yeah. maybe not. Nicolay's looking like maybe not, but. I'm, I'm, you know, a 90s, 90s kind of guy. I feel like New York hip hop, they were in the studio together. When you heard a posse cut, they like, uh, <laughs> you know, like uh, Noriega band from TV. Oh, yeah. That song, that was supposed to be, I think, Nori and Nature, maybe. And maybe maybe Big Pun. Mm. And then, but people came through the studio. Just, you know what I mean? It's just like if people came through now and they, we had a spot and they could be on the podcast. So, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's like Nature, like, so it's Nature, Nori. Somebody laid a fire verse. Cameron kind of came through. What's going on here? <laughs> yeah, and it, you know, it's like, nah, I want to get on this. Yeah, and you know, they they're all fr- they're legitimate friends that have relationships. Yeah, and the next thing you know, it's Cam, Jada, Styles, Nature, Big Pun, and it's for me an epic. Yeah, just because everybody cut. was there. You but know, now it's just like do they oh, still do pussy man. cuts even nowadays? No, no, right? no. Not really. But no. like There's the last no more, one I can think of was um, One Train <coughs> with um, ASAP Rocky, ASAP Kendrick, uh, uh, the Chef dude, um, <laughs> Chef dude, um, the <laughs> Big Bam Bam, um, <laughs> Action Bronson, <laughs> that guy, yeah, him. The chef, the chef Joey dude. Badass, Joey Badass, yeah, it was like uh, all of them. What's were the dude from Detroit? Oh um, yeah, my man, um, No Teeth. Uh, Danny Brown. Danny oh, Brown. Danny Brown. Danny Brown was on. He there. got his teeth back he though. Yeah. Well, he, he, got, yeah, I don't know if he had them at that time. He's though. looking real sharp nowadays. But then, like, even on that yeah. cut, it probably—I don't imagine they were all in the studio together. I'm no sure. way. No. Just no. Yeah. Yeah. No. Yeah. 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 Like, it, like they all got the beat, spit their verse, and they all sent it in. Yeah. I mean? yeah. Yeah. I mean, it. It yeah. really that. Nicolay, why don't you produce a posse track track for us? I, I, I was a big I posse. I loved like a good like you were talking about scenario like yes. The, I I think I think. Posse cuts were like a staple. Yeah. Like, what is mm-hmm. that? Um, that Black Sheep album, the first Black Sheep album. That oh yeah, and yeah. it's like it's, it was a not, not there was native one tongue. on every wow. album, right? Yeah, native yeah, tongue. Everybody yeah. had yeah. a posse cut, yeah. 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 especially in that native tongue sort of. Yeah, they would Absolutely. always have, and obviously the whole Wu Tang, the whole album was a damn posse yeah. cut. Yeah. Um. Um. Man, every album had one. You had. Yeah. You had. Um, Buddy. Like, LL I think cool Buddy J. was Buddy the first was, one. Yeah, LL Cool J. Man, LL had them. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, like Pun yeah. would have like Cuban Lanes. Yeah. Like, the whole yeah. Armageddon. Yeah. Oh, man. 
Yeah, a good posse like, yeah. cut. And it, I think it really just was like what people were into too. Because yeah. it was like. Yeah, it's like seeing your like your different people that you like together. Yeah, it's kind of yeah. like the Marvel shit. You know? Absolutely. Yeah, exactly. Like I was thinking yeah. the same thing. The same, and I mean, yeah. especially something like Scenario where you just have like a real, just like a classic sort of lineup. And then they're all verses that all kind of became sort of like eternal you know? yeah, yeah especially yeah. the buster stuff and everything. so who, who can we get on nicolay's posture cut so fonte <laughs> superstition definitely an mop yeah uh, we need, we need, uh, we need uh, any yeah. posture cut needs mop because it's like that just shuts it down like i need that yeah we're, oh, we're saying when you need him man. <laughs> right i need a yeah. nicolay mop mop Song. we could get real gully with it yeah, uh, we're gonna get just ooh, nothing, young like, MA. Can we get young, young Freddie young Fox MA? on there? We're yes. gonna just nothing yeah. but gully shit. Like yes. make, make sure yes. like you want to come. Yes. You don't want to bring your wallet. Don't bring no, 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 your watch. No, you, you, you might get your cell phone at home. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Just, just straight up. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that would be awesome. <laughs> that would be good. So all right, back on on, so on the other side, how how do y'all feel about? I feel like especially the con size. I'm gonna like in the boom baps don't appreciate like the producers who don't make the beats you know like the puff daddies the dj Khaled's, like that do you feel like those people deserve props for what what they bring to the table yeah i mean Uh, i think they deserve you know they're they're sort of the unifying element hey don't get all pc because the cameras on man y'all know you hate puff daddy (laughs) um biggie smalls um yeah i mean i think they they deserve credit for Again, like being that that element that that brings people together, that brought the artists together, whether it was monetary things, whether it was personality, whatever it is. Again, but I, I, well, no, I mean, I think a lot of times, like Diddy, he will he was like, hey, did and Jay Z does this a lot too. Yeah. Like he doesn't get the credit for, I guess, producing. Um, but Diddy or, be, or even Jay would be like, hey, I want this song sample like this because yeah. I'm thinking of this. Like I feel like. I feel like Jay Z's whole career, like a lot of his singles or, or even songs, he produced because he had a vision yeah. of what he want. Yeah. And like, you know what I mean? Like, like he gave Ninth the record, right? Yeah, the, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like Ninth did the zip thing. He played a bunch of beats. He's right. like, okay, that's cool. Um, well, I'm really thinking of this, right? And then and, you know, he thought Ninth was gonna go home, and and Ninth did it right there on the yeah yeah on the on the on the, on the, the scene. Right. But I, th- I think when you think about it, like I think. I think um I think the the biggest artists they they are the artists that do sort of have that ability. Like I think cuz I mean Puffy did make beats back in the day and yeah. it's not mm-hmm. like he never did. Like it's he's different than Khaled where it, I really literally don't know what that guy does. Yeah. Like I mm-hmm. really literally don't right, know yeah. like well, well, like, he, like, but I know Puffy, like, yeah, he's just putting like, people together. Yeah, yeah. But right, Khaled you know. did. I mean, I just think his his trajectory wasn't as he was a DJ. He was a, yeah, but he yeah, was yeah. a DJ. But yeah, I think yeah. he he made beats as well. He I think he did a he lot. Probably does. You right. know what I mean? Because I, I mean, like, his say, skill is more of let me get this rapper and this rapper and that yeah, producer and, and put them together. Like, he's also. But no, a I mean, he yeah, also had the idea of like I want like I want Rihanna. I want this guy, but I want this. Uh, this sample, the San- the Santana sample, that was a right. terrible record. Yeah. <laughs> God, was that an awful, terrible record? It was a big record, though. Yeah, yeah. it was a terrible record. You know, but <laughs> terrible or not. Yeah, that was a terrible put- Santana record. He oh, uh, and then they like, uh, yeah, like that was a terrible. I felt that was a really, 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 really bad record. Yeah, what happened to those dudes? What were they called? Um, um, Wyclef uh, uh, had those guys. Yeah, um, something um, project, right? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, it just wasn't really. <laughs> that was a bad look, man. That right. He produced it though. I mean, yeah, he, and they took yeah. the the most annoying part of that song, that little guitar. <laughs> I mean, Cal is kind of annoying. So I mean, yeah. but I, 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 and that I mean, I've heard stuff of his, or well, with his name on it that yeah. I did like. Yeah, yeah, you know, but. It's it's like radio music. Like you you sometimes don't realize like how dumbed down it is. Yeah. What is that song they got right now? The Loki Loki shit. Loki Loki. The, oh yeah, you've yeah. heard it. Yeah yeah. Like yeah. it's it's a, know, you know it's about. absolutely yeah. terrible. It's it's all it's, over it's the terrible, radio right, right now. It's like yeah. you turn on the radio. That's the one they're playing, and it's 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 literally one of those songs that makes you feel 
like dumb after a while. You're just like, man, like, I feel I, as like I've never gotten song. past 30 seconds of that song. Yeah, I, you know what I'm saying? I try to, it's just, yeah, I'm like, man, this is dumb. Now yeah, I gotta hear it. Yeah, I, yeah, I mean, you have heard it. I mean, 30 seconds in, you've heard the whole song. Yeah, okay. you really so have. Yeah. Like, like, but shit, like you nowadays, yeah. and I know. Talk about it like nowadays songs. There's no third verse. Yeah, most songs are under are, three minutes. Yeah, yeah, most songs are two two minutes. So one when when y'all make music, do y'all make music to the new wave or do you still make a full out beat like three minutes plus or whatever? I mean, we are never on the radio, so we can do what the fuck. We right? Want. Yeah. yeah. Like like I'm very conscious of trying not to sound like anybody or anything else. Yeah. I mean, like that that's always because like 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 these guys are like real like you know real like producers like i dj i make beats for fun but uh so like that kind of gives me that freedom to where like i don't have to make a certain type of beat for whatever like i like i just make what i want to make so but like there's no rules for me yeah. like all those rules are out out the window which is honestly yeah. the only reason like the only way to do it yeah because like anything else like you, they don't want the uh, the new you know, whoever the new, it, yeah. like, it doesn't, you're never going to have a chance, I think, if you're just trying to copy folks. That's right. You know, yeah. because there's so well, many I mean, that like, are so good yeah. right now. There's like, usually a number, if this, there's usually a number one, you got to already be there though, but there's usually a number one and a number two, and then sometimes a number three that usually fall off. And number one, it usually be, be kind of big. And then number two might be whatever, and number three usually. I think I know off. what you're saying. Like, like there's somebody who comes up with a sound or a style, mm -hmm. and then there's somebody who kind of, kind of piggybacks off that. Yeah. And like they're, they are they're probably part of that same wave. either yeah. either like the like like the same level or even surpass that. Yeah. That. Yeah, because sometimes that first number person. two would become number yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, and then there's three, four, five, six, seven, eight who right. all come and copy Which that sound. We just rarely have like. Yeah. Like that that doesn't really happen a lot where the where the number two surpasses, but it does. Yeah. Like I'm thinking I'm thinking if I know any examples, but um Like uh, I I was gonna yeah. say maybe maybe Scott Storch. Okay, yeah. yeah. Maybe. Like yeah, I don't yeah. know that he ever surpassed Dre, but he got pretty you can't, close. Yeah. I just don't know. just visibility wise. That's right, yeah. yeah. But that would maybe be the only I don't know. Yeah. Like Timberland had to do it um Danger. That's right. Yeah, danger. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But he de he certainly didn't surpass, and yeah, I think yeah. he's already kind of. Yeah. Now with right, uh, yeah. Yeah, with production and uh, me and yeah. me and my uh, like another member of the show, uh, Keith, we talk about that a lot, uh, especially with producers. Like, and that's what kind of made me bring up the conversation of what the, pro the actual producers bring versus the beat makers, because without without Diddy, uh, what's my man from Love and Hip Hop? Uh, he oh. never. Oh, D Dot. Not D Dot. Oh, okay. Love Hip Hop. What are you talking about? Um, the other guy. He made the Mariah joints. Yeah. He's I on. He's on. About. He's on Love and Hip Hop. He's the biggest. Yeah, he's the biggest dude. Uh, I, I, I know. Say I don't, it time. It's not. I gotta say, I don't watch. He's married to Faith right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the other guy. I know. I can picture his face. The, uh, yeah. Yeah, I could. Uh, I don't even want to look it up. But um, anyway, him, he made like he is the bad boy. Other than like D Dot and a few others. Yeah. I I'm a fan of D-Dot, Yeah, oh, yeah, Mad oh, Rapper, yeah. yeah. He he was the bad boy sound, and he, yeah. but without Diddy, nothing. Yeah. Danger. He was he was Timberland for a while. Yeah, he like, was. Like, we know who Danger is, but the people that's watching this don't know who Danger Probably is. Probably not. Yeah. And then, but without Timberland, you know, so, but then you do have rare examples like where you have Kanye, who was working under D dot and true, he yeah. became and he became Kanye. Yeah. That is true. I forgot about it. Yeah. Yeah. So that is probably but, the best example yeah. of uh yeah. So, yeah. I mean it's it's uh and I and I mean I think I, I mean I think some of those things are the difference between, like you said, like a beat being just a beat maker and a producer. And then sometimes being able to be a producer and a beat maker. Right. That leads yeah. you to be a super producer. Yeah. Yeah, you know, like how about your your um <clears throat> Um, Jay Dilla, and then and then you got like um, what's his, uh, we were talking about no uh, Black Milk. Oh, okay, you know, so like uh, they like like he didn't come up like right under him, but he's, I mean, oh, like that, yeah, same so, sound, it's same style. Close yeah, that reunion record. That's right. Yeah, everybody thought that was a Dilla record. Right, it was like a Black Milk record. Yeah, and and then like since him, like there's been others that kind of, you know, follow that same sound and style. Yeah. Uh, that was you know created by one person, but then it's like you got you know other people who 
fall in that same lane. So like like that exists. Yeah. Yeah. But man, like like nobody's passed, you know, well, Dilla. Now Dilla got particularly bit to all fucking hell because yeah. you gotta imagine even when um where like that first music album, Music Soul Child. Oh yeah, oh was, yeah, yeah. Was an entire Dilla like let's jazz. call it a tribute. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> let's call it a, you yeah. know. But like that that first touch of jazz, those records was very much like, oh yeah. Like you guys are like this is like close to comfort type shit. What what, what was the the uh, Janet Jackson record that uh, uh, Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis? Oh, got till it's gone. Yeah, like they. Yeah, the jury's still out. I guess it goes back and forth, but right. like it's still not decided if that was a if they jacked him or not. But um, I mean, it's it's it, very much his sound. Yeah, you know, it yeah. is like very. It, it's hard to argue. And then I guess they, you know, he. He made the Revenge remix, which is why people say he did that as revenge. So uh, that's why it's called the Revenge remix. Oh, that's crazy. It's J- yeah, the JD's Revenge remix of that record. Oh, man. But I, 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 I don't know. Jimmy Jam has always denied it. It's right. always that they said, like, we just made something that sounded like Dilla, but yeah. I. Tough. And then yeah. Q Tips on the record. It's like. I know Q Tips on the record. And it's like, man. On the record. I don't know. So, and um, before, I think. It's not even in between uh, part one and part two. We we're talking about organized noise not really getting there just uh, as, as producers. And, and I'll say I was going to save it. But I think one thing that hurts or uh, or would say would help productions and producers to kind of get to that notoriety level um, is having, or and maybe I'm wrong, but like having drops or just having an identifiable sound. Because it's like... Uh, Cause like, cause even like knife, we it talk about with knife. Cause it was uh, a snare for years. Yeah, but he doesn't have a drop. But if I go to Knife Wonder and he give me some electronic beat, it could be fire. But I'm gonna be like, nah, I don't give me a knife beat. You know what yeah. I mean? Like I want that soul, that soul you food, that, that snare. Yeah. Or but at the I same wanted, time, I kind of, I've kind of always hated that for him a little bit. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because mm-hmm. it's like. But you hate it as a producer, do you? No, hate no, it no, as, no. More as like somebody that like I, I would, I would have loved. I would have at some point loved to have seen a Ninth Wonder album that was like completely like off the beaten path, you know what I'm saying? But yeah. I think because he got into that, what you were talking about earlier, the mm-hmm. sort of the spreading of beats, you know what I'm saying? And how that works from a from just a, a, a producer's perspective. At some point, if you get a certain visibility, everybody wants some. And I think Ninth really had that surge, especially when Jay-Z did the threat record that everybody wanted ninth beats. And I think as a result, you have a, a real risk of spreading yourself too thin, you know? Right. And I think that happened a little bit with him where he didn't necessarily update his sound, mm. um, you know? And I think, again, he's got such an iconic sound that maybe he doesn't have to. Yeah. Right. But but you would like to... I would like to maybe see one or two projects from him where it's just like, yo, I've never heard him do any of this stuff. And right. you don't really get that from him as much as you get it from certain other like like I know I know Odyssey for instance is, is somebody that you can every now and then have a project in like I, that sounds literally different yeah, from, from anything you've ever done before you know and I think that's kind of what I'm always looking for though you know this not because like and I was about to say with his new stuff like all the the Jamila stuff it doesn't really necessarily sound like the old knife but I don't know if it's him or the Soul Council. Right, yeah. So I, so I, cause I was about to say I don't know. He has maybe be stepping out with some of the Jamla stuff that he's doing, but I don't, I'm not sure if it's like Crisis or like some, yeah, like you know, Jones, you know, yeah, yeah. All, all those guys, or even Knots, or uh, yeah, Knots is doing a lot of that. Um, yeah, like High Tech is is also working with them, I believe too. Yeah. So, so yeah, yeah it's, I mean, the thing about it is, like, I think I think what you were saying earlier, you just, you just do music because, like, at the end of the day, you do it for yourself, you know? Mm-hmm. And I think I think the hardest thing about being, like, in the game is, 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 is remembering that. Because at some point, the train just starts rolling, mm-hmm. and, like, all you're just doing is working all day long, just trying to keep up. And I think a lot of people don't take the time and say, like, you know what, like, I'm... I'm mapping it out so that I can do what I want to do. Yeah. So, yeah. Joe, you're kind of mm-hmm. like, or Kansa, uh, you're in the game. You're you're definitely in the game, but I feel like you're still at a, a point where you're still 
not dictated by any kind of label. So like, how do you, what's your, your, the angle that you take with either one getting, producing a song, like making the beat or even getting beats and stuff? Like one, do you stay to that two minute, do you have to, do you feel like you need to take, stay to like two minute structure or because you're of your background, do you still do like the full four minutes, 33, 36 seconds? Yeah. I mean, it, you know, when it comes down to it, you know, I'm, I'm to blame too. I'm, I'm definitely just sent beats out to folks and trying to collect a check and like here's 16 bars and a four bar hook and another 16 bars, you know. So hip hop in general, and it might just be the systems that we were bound to as far as NPCs and limited sampling space and all of that was like we just kind of cooked up an intro, stuck to that 16 bar um, you know format. So when I'm sending beats out, again, I don't really do that quite as much now. Um, if, if it's a local uh, artist, like if I'm working with Fuzz or something, then it's like, come through, you know, and the, the beat's still fresh on an MPC. And let's like, let me hear what you got. And then like, we'll, we'll tweak around that. Beautiful thing about working with Minds One, obviously, like we all live here. But um, yeah, we like, there's really no formula at all. And it, like, it's the same approach with the verses too. So like, especially on the new stuff we're working on, we really want to step outside the box and try to play around with, you know, some more back and forth stuff. Um, so I hate formulas, but there's no way to um, like totally remove yourself when you kind of come from like a purest place of hip hop too, because yeah. like the purest form of hip hop. Yeah, it's a little a formulaic, of, yeah, you know. It's a, a little formulaic, rules. you know. Mm -hmm. So I, again, I I like the the three verse songs. I like two or three hooks. Um, but at the end of the day, when it comes to mine's one music and my just individual pursuit of music, yeah, I, I try not to get too uh, too boxed in. Mm -hmm. um, but there are people, yeah, when they I send them a beat and they're like, all right, now just just give me like because you know you'll send a stem, you know, you send like a little like one minute version of it. Mm -hmm. Now just turn this into to three verses and, and three hooks. You know, and again, that doesn't happen quite as much nowadays because I'm not quite as active with uh, with beat making and, and sending beats out to folks. Um, I would say it's a little more organic now, just because I'm just working with the people I want to work with. Um, but yeah. so, is there any like uh, new school or today's producers that y'all would like like their either their beats or productions or 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 is there anybody today that you especially hate? You know, you <laughs> real quick, like just stepping like now when we think about films, I like like the mind designs and like I like the knowledge dudes and like I feel yeah, like knowledge. they are like super devoid of formula, you know, like these yeah, guys. I don't know who are, any of these people are. So mind design is like check them out. Like, um I'm trying to think how you might know mind design. Is that gonna come through the oh. um the rocking mind design right outside of the right, studio yeah, yeah. right man, now. Man, this is hip hop, man. Um, like, yeah. Like, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. These are like jazz artists that are that are making dope hip hop records too that are, so yeah, mind design's one that I like and I like knowledge. I like a lot of the I like the lo fi stuff, but I hate how like overdone the lo fi. Lo -fi. I mean lo fi is just like an approach to hip hop. It's it's now it's really sort of dumbed down and diluted. But you know, we think of like Kind of Dilla's a lo-fi-ish kind of dude, and yeah. that just kind of that comes from the SPs and. Um, so yeah. SP. So what? SP, I thought Oh yeah, I'm I'm, I'm a Lox fan as well, um, <laughs> but no. Uh, um, um, I would say Knotts is like one of my favorites. Like his sound and his style has always been something that I've been been like jealous of you know like uh he's able to find some cool samples and like the way that he does what he does has always been so like mind-blowing to me i'm always like man how did he make that yeah, sound like that yeah incredible. like how did he do that yeah. you know and he's the nicest guy too like yeah he's a real yeah, yeah yeah he's a real but he's 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 got that sort of it i mean you might call that formulaic too but like yeah. he's got this one thing and he does it i think better than yeah. Most people, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, um, I like currently, I like DJ Harrison a lot. He's a guy out of Virginia Beach, I think. So is it not um, from Virginia too? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, he is. That's right. Yeah. 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 Virginia has got some heat, man. Timberland, Pharrell, Pharrell, Pharrell. Teddy Riley, Chad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Uh, Kansa, well, DMV. Yeah. Close enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Claim it. DC. So, so Arsenal. So is there is there like so any any like are these new producers that y'all hear hear his little drop like I oh, can't, yeah. you know y'all be like I was gonna oh. say something about that when you said that earlier you know what? man like like I never liked you know um, drops you know like uh, what do you call it? producer drops mm -hmm. but like like I understand why people 
you know, do it, especially on the higher end. Like, you know, uh, if you're working with like major labels Mm -hmm. and you have your drop, um, then people know (laughs) that you made that beat. So then they make that call for you for the next track, you know? So, I mean, like, I get it. I just hate it. I hate it. Just like stick to the music, like have your own sound, be, be Dr. Dre. Like when you hear a uh, Dre beat, you know, it's Dre. I mean, Dre never needed to say, you know, Dr. Dre on his beat. <laughs> yeah, like you said, Primo never needed to do that. Pete Rock, you know, like, like when you would hear their beat. Uh, premiere, he does have, a, he does have the premiere. Well, like, like, um, I think that's for premier, his, that's... his like DJ stuff. Yeah, yeah. sure. That may, yeah, he yeah. might not do that on the record. Right, 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 right. Yeah. You know what Primo does have, and it's on the new Master Ace records. That, ah, ah, like, it's oh like, yeah, yeah, that is it's him doing it. But like, you'll hear <laughs> yeah. that. What I would hear like Gangstar Foundation stuff. That's like, right. Other features in the back. I already knew it was a premiere beat, but then you would hear that little vocal in the background. Yeah, yeah, that's it's true. It's kind of unique. You don't hear many people do that. Man, like Pete Rock would talk on his songs. Like, you know, he was the one to yeah. start that. Like, he would, uh, it was almost almost like ad-libs, you know? Yeah, yeah. You know, like he was the one who started that, where like Puffy kind of took off on that, you know? Uh, so, I mean, he had his thing, but like it wasn't just a drop that was like Pete Rock. <laughs> you know. uh, Nick Lay on the <laughs> track. <Khaled>. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Nick Lay on the track with the heat. Right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I had uh, I had one. I uh, Fonte recorded a drop for me once. Yeah. But that was for re- when I did remixes, and he's got the, okay. this is a Nick Lay remix. Oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought yeah. it was for more mixtapes. No, no, no. That's that, that's like what that. That's no, I one totally few remember times that. that I, yeah. But yeah, it is kind of lame, honestly. Yeah, we're yeah. about we're about to wrap it up. Uh, I would love to have a conversation about Percy Miracles. But is you know. it well? Like one, is he still alive? Percy Miracles is, is um. He's still alive and kicking. I can't confirm nor deny that. Okay. okay. But um. I, but the like Percy Miracles has always been so, like the funny thing is like it literally became something like that I think at the time Fonte didn't realize that the parody of it like it was a parody and people yeah. didn't understand it well, to a point where all the other music that was coming out at the well, yeah, time to, and the, it's so know, topical like now but the reason so to- that that uh, per- Percy Miracles potentially died was trapped in the closet, R. Kelly. Right. He was like, if people are making this kind of music, no wonder that people don't realize Perry, that music yeah, is the, a parody. Yeah, the serious music that came out was like sillier than like the silliest parodies that he could think of. That's so, right. But I, I think, but uh, do, uh, you know, I don't know that he's fully done. I mean, who knows? I, I would like to see a Percy Miracles pop up on a foreign exchange or Fonte album. Maybe a like hologram or something. <laughs> you know? <laughs> but, yeah. I want a Percy Miracles t-shirt. I want a Roy Lee t-shirt. Oh, and the Cord Triton. Right. <laughs> that, yeah. See, that's an underrated producer, Roy Lee. Yeah, yeah. man. Like, seriously, Roy mm-hmm. Lee. I, Roy Lee <laughs> taught me most things that I know. <laughs> so uh, let's wrap it up. Let's go around and have everybody uh, give their, their social medias or any things they want to shout out and all that kind of stuff. Uh, my social media DJ Battle NC uh, on uh, all social media platforms. Hey, can we talk about the the thing? Can we talk about Fight Club yet, or the two? No, no, like we can't talk about Fight Club yet. But like, like we got some things in the works. You know what I'm okay. saying? So hopefully, you know, this year, we're, like we're gonna have some fun. Yeah, yeah. sir. Nicolay music on all the platforms. He's and, fit. Um, yeah, he, he's Grammy nominated. Just Google him. Yeah, but then, I mean, it's like, that doesn't mean anything. Just, <laughs> just go to Nicolette Music. And then, again, if, you, if you're into that, like, there's more where that came from into Facebook. Like, I just started a new thing uh, on Facebook. But basically, what I was talking about earlier, how Facebook is sort of throttling all the traffic. But now what you can do if you have an artist page, which those of you don't know, is that you, you can start a group kind of attached to your artist page and the group if people are part of the group they see what you post like pretty much instantly where otherwise it just so Mm -hmm. um so now i'm just doing the kind of group thing so all the artists like check that out start a group invite your you can invite your fans to the group and then it becomes something where you can much more easily uh, interact with them so 
Nice. I need to do Check that. Check out the group. Yeah. Come come join the, the group. Mm. Uh, at Kansai, K O N S C I, Minds One, M I N D S O N E. All social media stuff. And then uh, Minds One Music. Um, I guess on all the social media platforms too. And you can check us out on Bandcamp and cop merchandise through Bandcamp. And again, Fat Beats has a lot of our stuff too. When's the next Miles One album? Yeah. We're working on that. We're diligently working on that. We're we're old men that have day jobs and other responsibilities. So, um, <laughs> but uh, we are actively recording that right now. Actually, spending a lot of other than this Sunday. Um, most Sundays, where we're in the studio recording recording the new album. Got uh, some cool production features on there. And uh, you said beat miners, right? Yeah, Beat Miners, Kev Brown's on it. Um, I'm not Kev Brown or Big B, by the way. <laughs> a few, few other names. You definitely have like a little Kev Brown. Man, we were in New York during uh, CMJ. I can totally see now that you're saying yeah. it. I'm like, you kind like, of are you know, sort of. Nah. Yeah. Um, not, I'm not Big B. I'm not Kev Brown. So, Nicolet, do you got what you got coming up next? We got a, well, a new fine. Uh, I, I um. God, what I come, I don't have a lot of coming up. No, actually. so no, uh, no city lights, no Fonte, no Nothing. foreign exchange. No, I thought you said 2019 on Facebook yeah. was foreign exchange year. No, I didn't say that. Well, I say that every year in January, like this is our year. But I okay. say that I've said that since '02. <laughs> so one of one of these years it will actually be true. <laughs> but now we um we're always working. I don't um I just toured a lot with um with with uh, the guys that mm. I uh, recorded my last album with. Which is a jazz trio. So What's I the name? What's, give shout the out. name of the group is called the Hot at Nights, and they um they're from Raleigh, and I I play with them when I don't play with the Foreign Exchange, and they it's a more jazz project, so it's instrumental music, and we come out. Uh, it's kind of fused like uh, Return to Forever, uh, stuff like that. You know, it's it's fusion with a lot of solos and a lot of tricks. Um, so we I've done that for the last year. Did a lot of shows that way, and um, Fonte did his solo record, obviously. Yeah. So um, at some point, we're gonna reform like Voltron. Yeah, yeah. and we're so, gonna do that posse cut for, produced by Nicolay. Yeah, man. With Fonte, MOP, MOP, so Freddie Fox. Fox. We can get Freddie Fox. Freddie Fox yeah, and Freddie Fox. Gibbs. <laughs> oh, yeah. fuck it, Ooh. Freddie Gibbs. Yeah, Ooh. yeah. So and, uh, and Fredro Starr from like, all the Freddies. <laughs> all the Freddies. <laughs> Friday Night Freddy. There you go. Nicolay, y'all Everybody. heard it here first on the Inquisitive Mind of Louis T podcast, Nicolay Pot, the Nicolay Posse Cut. And last, you heard it here last probably, but that's yeah. okay. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> so yeah, I want to thank everybody for making this far, tuning in. This is the Inquisitive Mind of Louis T. You know, if you want to be a, make sure you hit subscribe. If you're looking at this on Facebook, make sure you go to the the YouTube, hit subscribe on that. It's uh, Instagram, I M O L T podcast. Um, on Facebook, Inquisitive Mind of the Lowest T or I M O L T. On, on YouTube, search I M O L T. Somewhere we're on Sound, uh, what is it? Sound, SoundCloud? SoundCloud, yeah, okay. you know, I'm a SoundCloud rapper. So you can find me on SoundCloud. And uh, pretty soon, hopefully by the time you hear With this, no we're going to be on. Yeah. <laughs> You know, pretty soon. I'm, you know, I'm gonna do that on my next podcast. Gonna face tap. Oh my uh, God. Josh Saney. Live on air. Live, live on air. Yeah. Like it's really just honey mustard. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so, hopefully, by the time you hear this, I'll stop being lazy and I'll be on the other podcast audio streaming stuff. So maybe you're listening to me there now, or and you know, subscribers definitely not subscribers. Uh, sponsors, hit me up. If you want to be a sponsor? Have your merch up here or. Have my editor, Ivy, put your logo somewhere at the end of this or beginning of this podcast. Definitely hit me up at mindoflewist at gmail.com. Thank y'all. Thanks, uh, thanks Battle, Thank Nicolay, Joe. Thank y'all for coming through, you know, and uh, doing this. Yeah, man. All right.